Hello, everyone. Welcome to Trash Academy, where together we will learn about the global health crisis that is plastic pollution. Yo me llamo Liceo, my name is Eliseo, and together we'll be learning about the consequences animals, environments, and communities all around the world are facing due to the growing production of plastics and fossil fuels. During the next couple of weeks, we'll be learning about the invention of plastic, its beginnings, its life cycle, and how it has become one of the most destructive and used materials of our time. Have you ever heard the saying, there's always more fish in the sea? Well, that might not be the case in the future due to the growing production of plastics worldwide. According to the Alan MacArthur Foundation and a report published in 2016, it said that by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans. Now, this may sound straight out of a science fiction movie, but if you look around and see how much plastic we buy, use, and discard, it is a lot easier to understand how big and real of a problem plastic pollution is today and how bad it'll be in the near future. But what does it mean when there will be more plastic than fish in our oceans? What would our world look like and where will we be when our ocean that contained so many resources is now suddenly full of plastic garbage? And more importantly, what will happen to the populations of animals and marine mammals worldwide when there is no more fish or ecosystems to support any kind of life in our oceans? Now, we still have time to change not only what our oceans look like, but also the amount of life present in our oceans worldwide. Now, on the screen are only a handful of animals that can be seen in our oceans. I live in Santa Cruz, California, which is a small city that sits next to the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. And these are some of the animals that can be seen just off the coast. While some of these animals can only be seen underwater with scuba equipment, it is important to know that each animal plays a specific key role within their ecosystems, such as a sea otter which helps control the local sea urchin population from destroying local kelp forests, which hold more diversity of species than a coral reef. Our oceans also supply more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe here on land and also contain the largest animal to have ever lived here on planet Earth, known as a blue whale, which can grow over 100 feet in length. Now, our oceans and the amount of life found in its waters is truly incredible. I am a scientific diver and a marine biologist, and I can honestly say that there's literally no other place like it in our galaxy. Today, I am the education coordinator at Five Gyres, where I work to educate and teach the general public about the short and long-term consequences of plastic pollution, and also work to advocate for a world where products are sustainable, reusable, and safe for people to use, and also safe for our natural environment. Now, while many of us dream about vacationing in some beautiful beach somewhere, we often don't get this image in our heads. Today, we live in a world where almost everything we buy at the store comes bagged or wrapped in plastic, and it should come to no surprise that more and more beaches worldwide are beginning to fill up with plastic trash from the number of products we buy, use, and discard that all come in a plastic container. While plastic production and plastic pollution continue to grow worldwide, we need to think of alternatives that are reusable, sustainable, and safe that won't pollute our oceans, hurt our wildlife, or even ourselves. Today, plastic has altered our natural environment and ecosystems for many marine, aquatic, and terrestrial species here on Earth. While the qualities of plastic are desirable for packing your food or packing your drinks, it is these same qualities that prevent plastic from degrading in our natural environment, killing many creatures along its way. Now, here is an example of one of the many species that has to deal with the consequences of our plastic products and plastic items. While some sea turtles may live to be over 100 years of age, many will have their lives shortened by plastic consumption or plastic entanglement in netting as plastic production continues to grow worldwide. So by now, I think we all have a ton of questions about plastic, such as who invented plastic? How was it invented and why? But probably the most important one is actually, how did we get here? Now, the story of plastics actually begins with these game pieces. And over 150 years ago, back in 1862, these game pieces were actually made out of ivory. Now, ivory is something that comes from an elephant's tusk and is really, really expensive. So many companies at the time wanted to find a new material that they could make and use that did not cost a lot of money. Then came these two inventors. 
Alexander Parks invented parkasing in 1862, and only seven years later, John Wesley Hyatt created celluloid. In trying to find a solution to the billiard ball problem, these two inventors changed our world forever. They had created a new material that could be basically made into anything. But these plastics had one flaw. Both celluloid and parkasing actually melted quite easily. On screen, you'll see a timeline of the different kinds of plastics and when they were invented. In 1907, we had a new plastic material named Bakelite. And Bakelite was actually a lot stronger than both parkasine and celluloid because Bakelite did not present the risk of melting under electricity or high heat. In the 1940s, nylon was invented. And because of the war going on at the time, nylon was used to make uniforms and even parachutes. After the war, more and more plastic was used every day because it could be made into basically anything and everything. And then this came to be known as the plastic explosion in the mid 1940s. Today it is almost impossible to go somewhere where we are not surrounded by plastics at every single moment in our lives. Among all these plastics, single use plastics are among the biggest threat to our planet. Single-use plastics are plastics that are only used for a mere few minutes before they are discarded, forever ending up as pollution in our oceans and in our natural environment. Now, I want to thank all of you for attending today's lesson of Trash Academy, and I hope to see you all in our next episode. My name is Eliseo, and I hope to see you soon. Hasta la próxima.